Hey everyone, Chris here for Tolman's Guitars and Basses. In today's Master Your Tone episode, I want to talk about amps without effects loops. Actually, there are a lot of those amps. Think about all the Fender amps, Vox amps, Marshall Plexi, etc. Today, I want to show you two cool ways of solving the problem and making it possible to use clean reverbs and delays with those amps. No effects loop, no problem. In case you have an amp that does not have an effects loop, but you use that amp clean, you're good. You don't have to worry about effects loops or anything like that. You can plug all your pedals in front of the amp. They will stay clean because your amp is clean. But as soon as you start cranking a deluxe reverb, a Vox, AC, whichever, 15, 30, or a Plexi style amp, you will have that issue that whatever you have in front of the amp is gonna distort. Now, a reverb that's distorted, it's not the most pleasant sound. Of course, it's cool for certain things, but usually you don't want to have that. Same thing goes for delays. There is a good reason why these amps don't have an effects loop, mainly because if you want to have any sort of a drive coming out of them, you have to crank them, which means that the power amp is distorting. An effects loop sits in front of the power amp, so even if it had one, all those pedals and effects that you put in the loop would then be saturated. So the effects loop is kind of pointless. If you want to solve that problem and have a clean reverb or delay, you have to solve that after the power amp. Which brings me to the first way of solving this issue. This is the traditional way. You will still use your guitar cabinet and that is the Fryat power station. This is a power attenuator, so it sits between your guitar amp and the guitar speaker cabinet. It will also allow you to go down with the volume, which is very useful because most Cube amps are just way too loud for most situations, but it also has an effects loop, which allows you to put all your reverbs, delays, clean boost, whatever you want to put in an effects loop in there, because that is not going to get saturated at all. I know that the power station is not an affordable solution, clearly, but on top of giving you the option of having the effects loop, which instantly makes your rig much more versatile. It also is by far the most natural sounding power attenuator. It doesn't color your tone, it doesn't ruin the playing feel, which is a huge task for an attenuator. <laughs> The second possible solution for not having an effects loop is using a load box. Something like the aux box will bring your guitar signal level down to a line signal level, which is much closer to what pedals need. So this is how it looks. Your guitar goes into the amplifier and then from the amps speaker out, you go into the load box. Then inside the aux, for example, or the Captor X, etc., you'll have the cab simulation, mic simulation happening. You set that up until you like your tone. And then from the output, you go into your delays, reverbs, EQ, whatever you want to have in your effects loop, and then go into a DI box and then into the mixer if you play live or into the audio interface if you want to record yourself. Now there's one important thing about this and that's the term line level. A lot of guitar pedals will be fine with a line level signal, but not all. So you have to be careful with how hot that signal is. Your output is from the load box. You can go way back until there's no clipping happening and all your pedals sound fine. Another huge benefit of doing this, having this kind of rig, is that you can run your stereo effects and have a stereo sound with just using one amp. That's normally not doable with a, a classic guitar setup. You need two amps for that. But because the aux box, the Captor X, a lot of these load box cap simulation units have a stereo output, you can use both outputs to go into your stereo pedals, into your stereo DI, and you have your stereo sound going. That's pretty, pretty cool.
If you already have a load box without a cab simulation, you can still use its line out to go into a cab simulation pedal. There are lots of those and they all sound great. So that's cool. And then from that cab simulation pedal, you can go into your delay, reverb, whatever you want to have in your effects loop and then go into the DI box and you're good. And with all that tone talk aside, what really matters is to enjoy playing the guitar, regardless of the rig and how good it sounds. See you in the next one. Hmm.